Google just launched Gemini Tree. It creates fully functional applications so well designed you would swear they took dozens of hours to build. But the truth is, anyone can do it in seconds with just a single prompt once you understand this simple new framework to tell Gemini exactly what you want. So in this lesson, I'll teach you the easiest and fastest way to launch your first working application today built from completely nothing to a globally accessible app and using free tools so that you too can create stunning web applications like this, this, and this. I'll walk you through how to create the app with a single prompt in Gemini, how to link it to N8N, which takes care of the application's functionality, and how to launch it onto its own custom website domain for free so anyone anywhere in the world can use it. And by the way, you won't need any coding experience at all to implement everything we cover here. We are officially heading into an age where anyone can build anything and offer it to the world as long as you have a great idea. So if you have the time, listen to the end to ensure you're perfectly set up for the opportunities that AI continues to bring. Let's get started. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay. I spent a decade in creative and marketing work and half a decade leading data teams and now founded our AI solutions group and Robo Nuggets, our education arm, where we have several hundred members, all AI practitioners across the globe. And here, our mission is to make creating with AI easy to learn regardless what your background is, with a wealth of lessons that most people join for, but most members stay because of the community that we have built. All right, so the plan for this video is to take the simplest path to creating an application so that you can do it even if you've never coded in your life. And generally, there's three steps when creating an application. First is you want to create the app itself, which is now unlocked and made easier because of Gemini Tree. So you can create stunningly designed applications using one prompt, which I'll show in a bit. And then once you have that, you move on to powering the application, which is sort of like if you design the machine here, then you need to make sure that the machine works in this stage. And for this tutorial, we're going to do that using N8N, which is a no-code tool. And finally, once the machine works, we then launch it or deploy it so that anyone in the world can access it. And for this lesson, what we'll build is a website or web application that creates AI ads for its users. So how it works is, let's say you've met a potential client for your creative AI agency, and you want to quickly demo what your team is technically capable of. You just pull up this site on your screen or on your phone, take a picture of someone and upload them here, and snap a photo of their product, give a simple request like this, and ask the client what their email is. And when you hit submit, it sends a sample ad to their email, which can be an image like this, where you can see it was able to properly place that person and that product into one digital high quality poster, or it can also be a UGC video, which your potential client can preview like this example. I am obsessed with how good this perfume smells. Gypsy water is totally worth the hype. It's such a fresh yet warm scent. And again, the application was able to provide this person into this scene as well as the product, which is what's important. And also, since you're capturing emails here, not only can you use it to impress potential clients, you can also use it as a lead magnet if you're building up a mailing list for potential leads. And so I'll show you how to build some Something like this from scratch but in case you just want to use this whole template directly we made that template available here for our community members since they make these lessons possible and if you download this and upload it to gemini then you'll be able to open it in their editor and just customize it for a certain industry or for a certain client and just do whatever revisions that you need from it but you already have the template ready and the way that you use gemini for this will cover here in stage one which is all about creating the application itself and so to access gemini tree there's actually a couple of ways you can do it via google ai studio but to keep it simple i'll show you how to do it straight from the Gemini app. So if you go to Gemini in this URL, all you need to do to create an application is to make sure this is set to thinking because that gives you access to Gemini tree and just toggle this canvas tool as on. And if you send it a simple prompt of whatever it is that you want to create, and let's just fire that off so that you can test and see. After just a few seconds, it will generate that entire application for you and even preview it here in the canvas. And it does indeed work. So you can click on these buttons, you can fill in this form. And although that's already impressive, you can see this design is actually very basic and doesn't really do do justice to what Gemini tree is capable of. So to give an example, if I give it a more detailed brief or prompt like this, which we can just copy from our community resource page, and if we paste that to Gemini and fire it off and wait for a few seconds until it generates a design for us, you can see that it generated a web application that is very similar to what we had from earlier. And so not only is it able to render 3D effects like these that are interactive for the user, even the UI, the user interface of this application is much more improved versus the application we generated earlier. 
So now the question becomes, how do we write a detailed prompt like this? Well, the good news is I didn't write it myself because today with any text-based work, you should always default to seeing if an AI model can do that for you. So we built this custom GPT that anyone can access, by the way, and it writes it according to this prompting framework that we developed at the Robo Group, which we acronymed as Vibe to keep it memorable. And if you have this framework in your arsenal, you'll also understand how to give single strong prompts so that the AI model knows exactly what you want. So what does Vibe stand for? Well, if you're creating an application, first you need to give Give direction on the visuals of it, which is basically how does it look. And ideally, you should mention the style, the layout, and the design cues so that the tool understands how the front end should appear. So for example, if you're a designer, you can use terms like glass morphism, soft shadows, rounded cards. And in case you don't know these design terms, the good news is you can just have ChatGPT take on that role and you can give it design inspirations the same way that you would send a designer. For example, just searching on Google and sending that image here. And if you ask ChatGPT to integrate this into the visuals and give design cues, it will Will handle the heavy lifting of identifying what exactly that visual should look like in the final prompt. And of course, apart from the visuals, you also need to give guidance on how the interface should be. So what does the application do? And usually a good framework for this for starters is it can be via simple if and then statements. Basically something like if the user fills out the form and presses submit, then the application creates an AI ad and emails the output to them. And in fact, as best practice, if you can, you can see here I made this simple mock-up of what I want the user interface to be, which I just created in PowerPoint so you can do this in Canva or whatever is more comfortable, but I just outline here what it is that I want to see in the final application, which is why it was able to replicate that with more accuracy. And once you have the visuals and the interface locked down, the next thing to think about is the back end, essentially how the application, how the machine works under the hood. And again, if you're not technical, you can just chat with an AI model in order to figure this out. But at least for this example, what we're going to do is to have the form send data to N8N so that the N8N workflow can handle that processing for us, which I'll be showing you later anyway so that you're guided but if you're going into application development new, whenever someone says you're developing the front end and the back end, a good analogy to think about is the restaurant analogy. So if you are building a restaurant, there would be the front of house, which is essentially what the users see, in this case, the customers. So that includes the ambience of the place, that includes the menu, how they order, and everything that the customer sees. And that can be as fancy as you want, but every restaurant always has a back of house, which is where all the cooking is happening. So in the same way for an application, this would be the visuals as well as the interface and your back and would be the place where you are doing a lot of the processing to provide the user with what they need. And finally, you would have E, which stands for exclusions. So what are the constraints? Because if you don't give a constraint to a vibe coding tool like Google Gemini, then it's very possible that it won't know exactly what you are after. And so you just want to list the limits and guardrails so the tool knows what not to include. For this example, what we're going to do is to keep everything in a single file so that we can do a drag and drop upload for it and launch it to a website much easier to make it as simple and effortless as possible. And so so that is the Vibe framework in full. Very simple way to remember what elements you need to include so that you have a strong single prompt. And so if you go back to the prompt that we just sent, you'll see we have the visuals in here. We have guidance on the interface. We have guidance on the back end as well as the exclusions. And because of that, you get a great looking application at the very start, which is much easier to fine tune versus starting from a basic looking application like this. And by the way, you may notice that it's slightly different versus what we had earlier. And this essentially is because these AI models are still probabilistic in nature. So there's always a probability that the results you get are different every time. But the good news is if you're not satisfied with this current result because it's free, you can just open new tabs and generate a few more designs until you're satisfied with a good starting point. And once you're happy with it, you can just fine tune it either by typing it here directly. You can also just speak to it, which is much faster. So for example, let's say I want the design to be more of an Apple eye aesthetic. So let me just zoom that in so that you can see. And you can make it as detailed as you want simply by dictating it. But since a picture is worth a thousand words, you can just go to Google, find the design peg you want, and take a screenshot of it and attach it here. And if you ask Gemini to check that image for inspiration, then it'll be able to do that as well. And so now that it's done, you can see that it completely changed the colors. It even changed the copy or the text a bit here on what it says. But you can see it still completely works if you upload a photo. And lastly, one technique that I can teach you is this select and ask feature. So if I click this, I'll be able to annotate a specific part of this application. And here you can just give it a specific command like changing this copy into give us a request instead of describe your vision. And I think once that is complete, 
you can see that everything is retained except for the part that we just asked it to change. But now that you have this application, how do you now power it so that you can make sure that it works? And so that is now where we go to stage two. And there's many ways to do this, but to keep it simple, we'll do it via N8N, which if you're new, N8N is a no-code automation tool. It's quite similar to Zapier or Make.com if you've used those tools before. But the great thing about N8N is it has a free trial, so you can test it out for free. And it can also work as a backend to power our applications for certain use cases. And in N8N, usually with creative workflows like the ones that we are illustrating, the way you do that is through a three-part automation, where you start with feeding it its inputs that's coming from the application, and it's usually done via webhook, which I'll discuss in a bit. And when that information is received by N8N, you do the processing, which in this case will be generating an ad for us. And then we have an output section where we want to send that generated ad to. And because N8N is modular, you can also add, let's say, a Google Sheets node by the end of this automation. And that can be useful because remember, you're capturing emails through this application. And so for every email you gather, you can just log them into this Google Sheet. But to keep it simple, I'll show you how to set up these three nodes from scratch because they are the minimum viable requirements to make this application a reality. And the way you do that in N8N, if you create a new workflow, you can just add your first step here, which would be a webhook. And a webhook for our purpose is basically a URL that you just send some information to. And so if we open this, only thing you need to do to set it up for our case is to change this method to post. You also have the option to customize this path just so that your URL is not a jumbled mess. And now N8N gives you this URL that you can send information to. So if we copy that and go back to Gemini, you can just give it this prompt where you're asking Gemini to change the webhook URL to the one that you just copied from your N8N instance. And when you click submit, Gemini will make those changes for you. And once it's confirmed that, what we can now do is actually use this application and fill in the information here. So if we upload our photos, write down a request and an email, and before you click submit, just go ahead and click listen for test event in this webhook. And if Gemini set this up properly, if you click send here, once that is processed, you can see that N8N received that information from this side. And if we expand that, you'll see here in the output, that it was able to receive our source image as well as the target image, which is in this case, the product. And if you go to schema, that also contains several more information that you can just read through. But the important part is this body section where we have the request as well as the email. And so that is the input section now done. And so to give a simple example of what you can create, what you can do is you just search for the Google Gemini node, specifically this edit an image function. And the way N8N works for each node is that here on the left, you always have the input section. You have the configuration of the node that you are setting up here in the middle. And then here on the right is all the output that that node generates. So for this instance, it's telling you that you should put your prompt here. And for us to link that to what the user submitted, you can go to schema, scroll down, and just map this request into that area. And this green text is dynamic because it is mapping directly to what the user has typed. And then it's also telling you to feed it the images that it will edit. So since we have two images, we'll need two fields in here. And if you go to binary, you can just check their names in this section. So we'll just type that out and copy it. And the target images well, type that out. We can copy that in into this field. And before you execute this step, you do need to connect a credential. And this is just a way for Google to verify that you have the rights to use this service. So if you haven't done that yet, you can just click on create new credential here and you'll find that it's going to ask you for an API key. And to get that, if you head to our community resources page, you can just head to this URL. And here you can create an API key that you can copy from here and paste in this section. So if you save that, you'll now be able to make use of this node. So if we execute this step, you'll see in its output that it gave you a new photo, which here we can already preview. And now you have your AI advert sample that you can send to the user as a final step. Now, this is already actually quite good, but just as a call out, this node that we are using is the simplest way to illustrate this, but I don't think it's using the latest Google image models yet. But the great thing with N8N is if you learn it further, you'll be able to build workflows to whatever that you want done, which to give an example, this is a workflow that has the same logic. You have the inputs being arranged here and it turns out an output ad in the end. But under the hood, it's using the new Nano Banana Pro model, which if we provide a sample run of it, you'll see it can generate a much better ad simply because we're wiring it up to their latest model. And if you're a bit more advanced, you can also extend the workflow so that you animate the image using VO3.1, which is Google's video model. And if we run that as an example, you'll be able to get videos like these, which are the ones that we showed earlier. And by the way, these templates, we made them available for our community members as well. So if you're part of the community, you can just download them here, import them to N8N, and that will build the automation for you from scratch. But no matter how complex the workflow is, generally the structure 
structure of it is that you always have an input, you always have a processing section, and then you have the final section on the output of where you want that file to be saved or sent. And so to complete our example, we can just search for the Gmail node in here, specifically the send a message function. And this one, you also just need to create a new credential. If you haven't yet, great thing about this is that it lets you sign in with Google with the account that you want to be the sender in this case. And once you have that, all you need to do is to map the to field in here, which if we go to schema, go back to webhook, which is our input, and scroll down, you'll find the email that our user inputted in here. And if you drag it like I just did, you'll be able to see it. You can type in your subject in here. So let's just say, here's your ad preview. We can customize the message however we want. And what you can do for this case is under options, click on attachments. And if you add an attachment here, it will once again look for a binary data. So if you go to binary, you can just find the name of the file in here, place that there. And now if we click on execute step, it will now automatically send this message to this email. And if I go to my Gmail, you can see it here. And we now have that email sent to our intended recipient along with the file attachment. And in case you want to remove this footer by N8N, all you need to do is to add an option here, click on append N8N attribution and toggle that off. So there you go. You now have a simple backend that will power your application. So now before we leave this step, now that you have tested that your workflow is working, how do you now make sure that this webhook is always actively listening for any submissions to the form that is coming from your application? Well, the way to do that is quite simple. We just make sure that this workflow is active by clicking on this toggle. And then now if you go to webhook and open that, if you click on production URL, this is now the final URL that you should integrate into your application. So if we click on it to copy this, and let's say this version is the final application that I want to deploy. We just ask Gemini to update the webhook URL for us, similar to what we did earlier. And now when that is done, this back end on the right is now always actively listening for any form submissions from your application. And for you to test this out, if in case you want to verify, you can just submit this form straight from Gemini, click execute. And if we go to executions here in N8N, once that is submitted, you should now find this workflow being triggered automatically. And here you can see that it's running at the moment to generate that ad, which it now was able to do. But now that you have a front end and you also have a backend, how do you actually take this thing that you've built and launched it on the internet? And again, there's many ways to do this, but to keep it simple and free, what we'll do is just upload our app to a service like Netlify. And if you go to netlify.com, what they are is a platform as a service business. But in our case, just think of them as a digital publisher for websites. And one of the great things about their platform is that they have a really generous free tier. And once you log in, you can also access this drag and drop interface, where basically you just need to drag and drop your application here and they will deploy it or launch it for you. And so to do that from within Gemini, all you need to do is to go to this code section, go ahead and click Control A to select all of it and then Control C to copy it. And all you need to do is to create a new text file here in your computer, name it as index, and then change this text to HTML as the extension. And once you have that, you can actually do a right click and still open it with any text editor. In this case, we'll just use Notepad and then we'll paste that whole code base that we just copied from Gemini and click on save. Now for you to verify that this works, what you can actually do is to just drag it into your Chrome browser and you should be able to preview your application natively here. But to deploy it so that anyone can access it, you can try dragging this file into Netlify, but it will tell you that as per their guidelines, you just need to create a folder to house it first. So if we create a new folder, we can call it something like site and move our file in there. Then this folder is now what we can drop into Netlify. And once you see this page, your application should now be live in this URL. So if you click on that, that now takes you to your application that is now fully deployed and which works because whenever you submit this form, it triggers the N8N under the hood. And if you're demoing this for someone, you can just send to them this link and they'll be able to access it as well. Now, if in case you want it to be a bit more professional and have a custom domain, in Netlify, you can just go to domain management, click on add a domain. And if you already have a website, you can do it here as well. But for this case, I'll show you how to buy a new domain. And again, there's multiple ways to do this. You don't have to do this via Netlify, but this would be the easiest where if you just search for a certain keyword, that will give you the domains that are available right now. So we can try purchasing this Prisma Labs that digital. And if I click on buy, it will take some time for Netlify to set that up. But once that's done, you can see that if you go to prismalabs.digital, you'll have that web application fully deployed. So there you go. We just built your first application end to end. And if you noticed in every step, we showed a free option on how to do it, which is really only possible today. A few years ago, a tutorial like this would have taken days for you to finish and hundreds of dollars for you to deploy. But now you can do it in minutes because of AI. And obviously, if you go deeper into this, there's other things to consider, like the security of that webhook that you just put on the internet. And also that eventually you'll have to incur business expense to fully use these tools that we showed. However, that doesn't take away from the fact that you can try this out yourself if you are willing to learn. And honestly, this is probably not the last that we'll hear about AI doing things like these. So if you like this sort of training, you can check out our community too. 
You don't necessarily need to join to learn these things, but if you do want AI training certification, plus several more lessons around AI and automation that we have here in the classroom, and if you want to meet 1,000 plus AI practitioners that are all in this journey together to learn, then check out the community to see if that's for you. And by the way, we also partnered with 570 plus of the top AI and SaaS tools for deals and savings for our annual members, where basically we bought a bunch of annual subscriptions to these deals to give out to our members who are on the yearly plan. And this December, we'll also have several prized learning events and meetups that we'll initiate for the community. So if that's interesting to you at all, then check out the link to the community just below. And finally, if you learned something from this video, then consider subscribing to this platform as well if you haven't yet, because that helps us a lot in order to produce more educational content like this. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.